Biology students, this is Mr. Gales, and I have for you today a genetics video quiz. In a moment, you're going to see a series of questions that regard Mendelian inheritance and genetics. When the list of questions comes up, just hit pause on this video and take a moment and answer these questions on your own paper. You may need to do a little bit of work. You could use a calculator if you need to. Once you've finished answering the questions, go ahead and hit play one more time, and then we'll go through the answers to those questions together. So again, here come the questions. And at this time, hit your pause button on this video and uh, work through the answers, and then we'll go through the solutions together. All right, here's the solutions for this first uh, genetics video quiz. Two or, um, or more alleles, or two or more forms of a gene for the same trait are referred to as alleles. Right? We've seen lots of different alleles as we go through these genetics problems. Uh, number two, separation of factors during gamete formation is described by Mendel's law of segregation. This is Mendel's second law. First law is the law of dominance. Second law is the law of segregation, that the alleles separate during gamete formation. Actual genetic makeup of an organism is referred to as the genotype. It's the genes that the organism has. What is the genotype of parents that produce offspring with a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. This is a monohybrid cross. It's one of our six representatives. And the genotype of the parents that produce this uh, phenotypic ratio is heterozygous times heterozygous. Number five, what genotypic ratio results from a cross of a heterozygote and a recessive parent? We're looking for genotypic ratio, heterozygote, and recessive. And the genotypic ratio for that one is 0 to 2 to 2. That's the last of the six representative monohybrid problems. Number six, which allele is only expressed in the homozygous organism that's recessive? Um, if we think about uh, one of the examples we used earlier in this unit was tall versus short, tall dominant to short. You can have a tall organism that would be big T, big T, or big T, little t, and that would give you tall. Um, and then if you have little t, little t, that would give you short. So which allele is only expressed in the homozygous organism? Here you can see the recessive allele, but it's not expressed. You end up with the tall plant. Here you can see the recessive alleles are expressed as short, but it's only when it's homozygous recessive. All right, number seven, tall is dominant over dwarf or short, and purple is dominant over white. What is the genotype of a dwarf white plant with white flowers? First of all, you need to make a key. So here we're going to look at big T is tall, and little t is dwarf or short. And uh, purple, big P, is purple. And little p is white. And notice that I put a line over the little p to indicate that it's recessive because it looks, you know, the dominant and the recessive form of that allele looks so similar. So if I want to write the genotype of a dwarf plant with white flowers, dwarf would be homozygous recessive, so that would be little t, little t, and white flowers would be little p, little p. All right. So there's the solutions to 1 through 7. And here we'll do the solutions to uh, 8 through 11. All right, if an organism has the genotype big D, little d, big L, little l, what are the gametes that can arise? You should remember that when you're doing gametes for a dihybrid problem, you need to do FOIL. So FOIL is the first in each pair. We have the big D and the uh, little d, or big D and big L for the first. So that's a gamete. And then outside, the outside of each pair, big D and little l. And then the inside little d and big L, and then the last in each pair is the little d and little L. So you're going to end up with four gametes here. What phenotypic ratio will always result from a dihybrid heterozygote times dihybrid heterozygous cross? That is always going to be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And in this ratio, what you need to understand is that the 9 is going to be dominant and dominant. In other words, dominant for both traits. The three would be dominant for the first and then recessive for the second. Another three is going to be recessive for the first and dominant for the second. And then the last one is going to be recessive for both traits. Number 10, what law of Mendel's predicts the way genes or alleles for different traits assort during gamete formation? This is Mendel's third law, which is called the law of independent assortment. 
this is the law that makes it possible for us to use the rule of multiplication to do complex problems, independent assortment. All right, and our final problem here, number 11, if tall pea plants are dominant to short and green are dominant to yellow, how many short green peas would you expect if two dihybrid heterozygotes were crossed and 192 peas resulted? So first of all, let's make our key tall, and that's dominant to short, and we have green dominant to the yellow. And our cross is two dihybrid heterozygotes, so big T, little t times, uh, I'm sorry, big G, little g, times big T, little t, big G, little g. And what you should recognize is that's going to give you a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio because it's a dihybrid heterozygous problem. The 9 will be dominant for both, so tall and green. Uh, three of them will be dominant for the first and recessive for the second, so that's going to be tall and yellow. And then the next three is going to be recessive for the first and dominant for the second, so that's going to be short and green. And then the last, the, just the one, the singleton here, is going to be sh uh, recessive for both, so that's going to be short and yellow. Okay, so in this problem, we know our ratios. We know that there are 16 possible outcomes here, um, and we know that we're looking for short green peas, which is this one here. So the way we would solve this problem is take the number given, which is 192, and multiply that by 3 sixteenths, or multiply it by 3 and divide by 16, and what you end up with for this is 36. You should have 36 short green peas if this is the cross that's, that's done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you did well on that one. We'll have another uh, genetics video quiz coming up real soon. Talk to you later.